as we have done before, after studying the motion of an object uh, modeled as particle and investigating the forces influencing that motion, we turn our attention in energy of that object. So this time, we will tackle on energy of simple harmonic. We're, we're done investigating the forces acting on a simple harmonic motion. We also describe the motion of the uh, an object in simple harmonic motion. What will be the speed at that position? The speed as a function of time. What is the position as a, as a function of time of an object in simple harmonic motion? So we will tackle energy of simple harmonic motion specifically the mechanical energy of an object, oscillating object, or object in simple harmonic motion. So, so suppose, suppose there is an oscillating object, object that is attached to this ideal spring. It is oscillating in a frictionless horizontal plane. So if this system is isolated, so it means there's no non-conservative forces if there's no non-conservative forces like friction, air resistance, so it means the total mechanical energy at every point is equal. So it is the total mechanical energy at this position will be equal to the total mechanical energy at that position. Well, that is also equal to the total mechanical energy. The total mechanical energy is the kinetic energy and pot potential energy of, uh, of an oscillating object in a certain position. So let's like uh, take a look at this object. So it is initially at rest and then I will displace this object in up to the maximum displacement. So there is the maximum potential energy. Potential energy is independent of the position, not on the speed. So again, remember that the speed at the Maximum displacement is zero because as it uh, as the block as this object moves towards the maximum displacement, there is decrease of speed. When that object is at the maximum displacement, the object will momentarily stop. So if, it, if that object momentarily stop, so it means at that position at the maximum displacement the speed is zero. So let's talk about the potential energy. What is this potential energy? The potential energy when the object is, any object, uh, any elastic object like spring or rubber band, when you stretch that the object from its equilibrium position or from the rest position, then you store an energy, what we call the elastic potential energy. So when you stretch or compress. So if there's compression, there's also uh, stored potential energy. So if this is an isolated system, the total mechanical energy, which is equal to the potential plus kinetic energy, will be equal at every position, right? So look at the graph of the, the line, blue line indicates kinetic energy. And the potential and the red line indicates the potential energy. The red line here indicates the total mechanical energy. Total mechanical energy, which is potential, elastic energy, and kinetic energy. So what will happen to the elastic potential energy when it is at the maximum displacement? Up to, uh, the maximum displacement here is 10 cm. So what is the potential energy? or potential elastic energy when the ob oscillating object is at the maximum displacement or at the amplitude. Look at the graph, the potential energy is maximum. Now as it approaches to uh, equilibrium position, there is decrease of potential energy. Why? Because the amount of stretch of the spring decreases as it approaches to the equilibrium position. So let us look again. So as the object approaches to the equilibrium position, then 
there is decrease of potential energy as uh, as well as the displacement of the oscillating system from the equilibrium position. Now, as it approaches to negative A, there is increase of potential energy because there's increase of displacement from the equilibrium position. Well, uh, this time, we'll focus on the kinetic energy. How about the kinetic energy of this simple harmonic motion? When that object is at the maximum displacement, the kinetic energy is, indep is independent or uh, is dependent on the speed of an object as well as the mass. But the mass of that object, when, os when that object oscillates, does not change. Only the speed changes at every position. The speed at the maximum displacement, what we call amplitude, is zero. Because that object momentarily stops when that object is at the maximum displacement. So since the kinetic energy is dependent on the speed, then it, and the speed at the maximum displacement is zero, then kinetic energy is zero. So look at the graph. There is increase of potential energy as the oscillating system approaches to equilibrium position. And then once passes through and then to the equilibrium position and then approaches to negative amplitude, then there is decrease of the kinetic energy. So as, uh, by looking at the graph, the maximum kinetic energy is found at the equilibrium position. And the maximum potential elastic energy is found at the maximum displacement, what we call the amplitude. Uh, positive and negative amplitude, the potential energy is maximum. And then let us take a look at the total mechanical energy. What is the total mechanical energy of this oscillating system at every position? Look at the graph. It is horizontal. And it this, la, uh, this line, horizontal line, is parallel to the x-axis. So it means there is no change of total mechanical energy. When this system is isolated, okay, no friction, no air resistance, so it will continue to oscillate up to time equals infinity. Okay, so again, there's no change of total mechanical energy if this system is isolated. All right. So the elastic potential, what is this elastic potential energy? When you compress or stretch the spring, the spring has what we call potential energy. The compressed spring, when allowed to expand, can apply a force to one object. So there is force, there is displacement, then there's work done. Uh, that is equivalent to the potential elastic energy. The potential energy of the spring can be transmit, transformed to kinetic energy. So let's go back to the simulation. Okay. So as increase of kinetic energy when that object approaches to equilibrium position, there is decrease of potential elastic energy as it approaches to equilibrium position. Why? What happened to the potential, some of the potential energy? It was transformed to kinetic energy. Until such time, the potential energy becomes zero and the kinetic energy is maximum at equilibrium position. Then after the equilibrium position, there is increase, a decrease of kinetic energy, but the potential energy increases as it approaches to negative amplitude. Why? Some of the kinetic energy, when it approaches to negative A, is transformed into potential energy. So the energy stored in a stretch or compressed spring or any other elastic material is what we call the elastic potential energy. And it has an equation US, which is the potential elastic energy. Now, if it's mechanical energy like falling object, we usually use P dot E as potential energy. But this one, since this is elastic potential energy, we use US as the potential elastic energy. 
So the elastic potential energy is expressed in the equation one half times the spring constant times the square of the displacement. So it paints, we have here an equation one half kx squared as the elastic potential energy. So it means the elastic potential energy is dependent on its position or displacement from the equilibrium position. Why? Why not spring constant? Spring constant is constant, so it does not change. Uh, but the position changes as it oscillates. So this also change of potential energy, potential elastic energy. The energy is stored only when the spring is stretched or compressed. There is, there is uh, stored elastic potential energy when you compress or stretch the object. When that object is at the rest position or equilibrium position, it's not stressed, uh, stretched, it's not, it's not stretched nor compressed. So meaning the potential energy, elastic, pot elastic potential energy at equilibrium position is zero. Elastic potential energy can be added to the statements of conservation of energy and work energy. If you can still remember in physics one, or me uh, mechanics, the total mechanical energy at one point is equal to the total mechanical energy at every other point. The potential plus kinetic energy at the first position will be equal to the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy at the second position, which is also equal to the sum of kinetic energy and potential energy at the third position and so on. So we have energy transformation we transform kinetic energy to potential energy and vice versa. Potential energy converted to kinetic energy. So the block is moving on a frictionless surface and this, again, I'll, I'll elaborate that, that this system is isolated system. So there's no non-conservative forces, friction, air resistance, no air resistance there. So the total mechanical energy is the same at every position. So the block is moving on a frictionless surface in a constant speed, right? So when it approaches to the x of zero, which is equal to zero, displacement is zero, the speed at x of zero is equal to V of i, and then the spring will be compressed. What will happen as it comp the spring is compressed? There is force acting opposite to the direction of the speed, which is, which is, is, which is what we call the force of the spring or spring force which is with, that will oppose to the direction of the speed. So what will happen to the speed? It decreases as it approaches to negative A. So many, at this position X of O, the total mechanical energy is just one half mv squared. It's just the kinetic energy because at this position, the spring is not yet compressed nor stretched at this position. So the total mechanical energy of the system is just the maximum kinetic energy of the block, which is equal to one half times the mass times the square of the speed when this object slides along the horizontal frictionless horizontal plane. All right. So let's continue on the energy transformation. So the potential energy for the mass of the spring is given U, which is the potential elastic energy, which is equal to one half Kx squared. K is the spring constant, X is the position. So the conserva conservation of energy can be written as E is the total mechanical energy, which is equal to the K, kinetic energy, plus U, the potential elastic energy. And k is one half mv squared plus one half kx squared, which is equal to constant. If it, if it is constant, it means it is equal at every position x. So at the maximum displacement, the energy is purely potential energy. The maximum displacement or what we call the amplitude because the block will momentarily stop at the maximum displacement. Now, if, it, if that object stops, momentarily stops, so it means the speed is zero, 
if the speed is zero, kinetic energy is zero, since kinetic energy is dependent on the speed of the object, right? So the maximum displacement, the energy is purely potential energy at the amplitude. So the total energy is just the potential last maximum potential energy, which is equal to one half k a squared. Now at x equals zero, it means the rest position, the unstretched or compressed position of the spring, the total mechanical energy is just the maximum kinetic energy. Why? The amount of stretch or compressed in the spring is zero. So the elastic potential energy is zero. As it approaches to the equilibrium position, there's increase of speed. So there's also increase of kinetic energy until once the object is at the equilibrium position, it will gain the maximum speed. Now, if the speed is maximum, then kinetic energy is maximum. Whenever you stretch or compress the spring, you are storing a mechanical energy on that spring. That mechanical energy is what we call elastic potential energy. Okay. Suppose I have here an ideal spring. We name this spring obeys Fock's law, and it is from equilibrium position x of o, and at, then the spring is attached by an object with mass m. Okay, and then I will bring the this object from equilibrium position to the displacement a maximum displacement. Now. The elastic potential energy is independent on its uh, position or displacement from equilibrium position. Now, since the object is at the maximum displacement, so it means the elastic potential energy is maximum. Now, for conservation of mechanical energy, when potential energy is maximum, then kinetic energy is zero. So, it means at this position, if the Elastic potential energy is maximum, so it means kinetic energy is zero. And what else? What it makes the kinetic energy is zero at this position. Remember that the speed at the maximum displacement is zero. And kinetic energy is mechanical energy that is independent on the mass and the speed of an object. The mass of this object, as I uh, release it and this object slides and oscillates in simple harmonic motion the mass of the object does not change only its speed the speed at every position is different the speed at the maximum displacement is zero so it means kinetic energy is zero all right so the next so the total mechanical energy at this position when that object is at the maximum displacement what we call the amplitude will be equal to the maximum elastic potential energy. Now, when I release this block, and this block moves towards the equilibrium position due to the what we call the restoring force, and then when the block is at the X position, it gains speed. As it moves towards the equilibrium position, it, it gains speed. So if that object has speed, then it means that object has kinetic energy. Where is that kinetic energy come from? It is from potential elastic energy. Some elastic potential energy was converted to kinetic energy. Okay. So since this block is not rolling, it's not rotating, so we don't consider the uh, rotational kinetic energy. We'll just consider the linear kinetic energy of this object that is oscillating. So the total mechanical energy at this position x will be equal to the potential energy at this position plus kinetic energy. Now what will happen to the elastic potential and energy as it moves towards the equilibrium position? Decreases. The elastic potential energy decreases as it moves towards the equilibrium position. Why? the displacement from its equilibrium position also decreases again the elastic potential energy is dependent on its position or displacement from the equilibrium position 
once the position, once displacement decreases from its equilibrium position, it means there is decrease of elastic potential energy. And some of the kinetic uh, potential elastic energy were converted to kinetic energy. Now, when the object is at the equilibrium position, the amount of stretch of the spring is zero, or the displacement of this block from equilibrium position is zero. So it means the elastic potential energy at the equilibrium position next to O must be equal to zero. Now, again, in conservation of mechanical energy, if elastic potential, if potential energy is zero, then kinetic energy is maximum all right so why the speed remember in our previous topic on uh, the speed the displacement as function of time okay when the object is at the equilibrium position the speed is maximum so it means if the speed is maximum then kinetic energy here is maximum if kinetic energy is maximum then the elastic potential energy equals zero and the total mechanical energy at this position will be equal to the maximum kinetic energy so again the total mechanical energy at one position is equal to the total mechanical energy at any other position of this oscillating system if the system is isolated no non-conservative forces like friction and air resistance so the e or the total mechanical energy at position negative amplitude will be equal to the total mechanical energy at negative x position which is which is also equal to the total mechanical energy at the equilibrium position which is also equal to the total mechanical energy at the x position which is also equal to the total mechanical energy at the maximum displacement amplitude so let us obtain the total mechanical energy of an oscillating system in simple harmonic motion so we know that the total mechanical energy at one uh, one position of an oscillating system in simple harmonic motion is the total elastic potential energy and kinetic energy of an object oscillating simple harmonic motion so, but we don't consider here the rotational kinetic energy since the object attached to the spring is not uh, rotating while it is oscillating it is just sliding in a uh, horizontal a frictionless horizontal plane so there is no rotational kinetic energy here so again the total mechanical energy is the po elastic potential energy plus the kinetic energy and the elastic potential energy is one half kx squared and then the kinetic energy is one half mv squared so we know the position as a function of time which is equal to the the amplitude cosine the angular frequency times time so that is the position which i discussed already in my previous video so this is the position at the as a function of time the amplitude cosine omega t and the speed is equal to negative amplitude omega sine of the angular frequency times time okay i need to put uh, parenthesis it means sine of the product of the angular frequency and the time so i will replace the x position by amplitude cosine of the angular frequency times time so the kinet the total mechanical energy will be one half times the spring constant x will be replaced by a cosine omega t so this is a cosine omega t quantity squared plus one half m what is this V. the speed of an oscillating system in simple harmonic motion as a function of time is negative amplitude 
sine of the angular frequency times time. So I will replace B by this one. Then we have negative A omega sine of the angular frequency omega times time squared. Then we have the total mechanical energy equals one half K times A squared cosine squared omega T plus one half M A squared omega squared sine of sine squared of omega t and we know that the angular frequency is the square root of the spring constant k over the mass attached to the spring so the square of omega is k over m so i will replace omega squared by the spring constant over m so you have E equals one half K A squared cosine of omega T plus that's cosine squared plus one half times the mass attached to the spring times A squared omega squared is the spring constant over the mass attached to the spring so this is K over m sine squared omega t so you have the total mechanical energy will be equal to one half k a squared right so again we can cancel m here then cancel m so we can factor this into one half k a squared times cosine squared omega t plus sine squared omega t the Pythagorean trigonometric identities of cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1 it's equal to 1 right always remember this cosine squared of any angle let's say theta plus the square of the sine of an angle theta is always equal to 1 so we have cosine squared omega t plus sine squared omega t that is equal to 1. So the total mechanical energy is just 1 half k a squared. So we have E, the total mechanical energy is 1 half times the spring constant times the square of the maximum displacement, what we call amplitude. So using the, the concept of conservation of mechanical energy in the simple harmonic motion, we can obtain the velocity of an oscillating object as a function of position x. So the conservation of energy allows a calculation of the velocity of the object at any position in its motion. So given v equals plus minus the square root of k over m, times the square of the amplitude minus the square of its position x. So speed is maximum at x equals zero. So it's minus zero squared, so that's square root of k over m. Uh, a, what is the square root of k over m? That's the angular frequency, right? If this is zero, so v for x equals zero, what is v? So that is plus minus the square root of k over m. Since x is 0, so that's 0 squared is just 0. So we have a squared. So the speed v is plus minus the square root of k over m times a. Square root of a squared is a. And what is this square root of k over m? That is the angular frequency. 
you have plus minus the angular frequency omega times a or plus minus the amplitude the maximum displacement amplitude times omega so this is the maximum speed if you can still remember a previous lesson the function of velocity or the function of speed now the speed as the function of time uh, since the sine of omega t ranges from negative 1 to 1 then sine theta let's say equal to 1 so what is left is amplitude and omega so the this is the maximum uh, speed magnitude of the velocity and speed at speed is zero at x equals plus minus a yeah when x is equals when x is plus minus a so v equals the square root of k over m times a squared and you square a positive or negative becomes positive so this is positive a squared so a squared minus a squared is zero times any spring constant and the mass v equals zero uh, the plus minus here indicates the object can be traveling in either direction so this time let us obtain the speed of an object that is oscillating in simple harmonic motion as a function of position right so we will use the conservation of mechanical energy the mechanical the total mechanical energy is equal to the elastic potential energy plus the kinetic energy at the certain position so but what is this total mechanical energy that is equivalent to one half times the spring constant times the square of the maximum displacement what we call the amplitude so this is one half k a squared and what is this potential elastic energy equal to that is equal to one half times the spring constant times the square of the position or displacement from the equilibrium position so we have one half k x squared plus kinetic energy is one half m v squared so if we divide each term by one half then we can cancel one half then we have the spring constant k a squared equals k x squared plus m v squared or m v squared equals the spring constant k the square of the amplitude minus k the square of the position x position and then i will divide it by m so the square of the speed will be equal to, to k the spring constant times the amplitude squared minus the spring constant times the position x squared over m and then we can factor this so the square of the speed is k over m times the square of the amplitude plus the square minus minus the square of the position so let us square both sides then the speed as a function of position x will be the square root of k the spring constant over the mass attached to the spring times the square of the amplitude minus the square of the position so v here is the speed at x position k is the spring constant and then m is the mass attached to the spring and a is the maximum displacement what we call amplitude so this is the equation of speed as a function of position x